This video is sponsored by Omaze. Wanna win a Tesla? Better listen to the ad. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sarcastic Chorus, and some people really need to pull their heads out of their asses. So if you're not on the internet much, first off, good for you. But for the rest of the unfortunate souls like myself, you may have noticed a certain backlash brewing. This anger at companies like Disney. Not for any of the millions of deserving reasons though. No, people are angry because gay. Which equals sex, which equals Disney is shoving sex at my kids and I'm too uninvolved in their lives to stop them. Now, I could pretend to give this argument the benefit of a doubt, but seeing as people only seem to really care about sex and fiction, when it's non-straight couples, let's just cut to the chase. Shipping isn't inherently sexual, sexuality doesn't equal sex, and having LGBTQ characters in a show can't make your kids gay because they already are. Hi, again, I'm Sarcastic Chorus. Please subscribe, because I am out of fucks to give. Originally I want to make this a turning red video because talking about Disney equals big money, like all the other view-hungry YouTubers, but because of a cavalcade of setbacks, poor decisions, and enough rewrites to make a documentary, I've decided to discuss this pushback we've seen against LBG representation in media. Most of this footage will be turning red, I finished the whole video twice, and then restart it twice, and I am just, I am too burnt out to try and fully replace all of it. There's the real reason. Now, versus the appeal that we're waiting, I did like Turning Red. It was the most I've enjoyed a Disney film in a while, easily better than the Pixar film we all forgot about, the disappointingly straight one, and the one with a soundtrack. As in spite of the nonsensical, often racist backlash against a film that hadn't even come out yet, Turning Red proved to be a really fun romp that continued the new age of Disney, where the main villains are generational trauma, as the kids who use Disney as an escape are finally the ones making movies. People started shipping May and Miriam because of course they did. They had emotional moments, so of course it happened. But because of that happening, it culminated in people complaining and repeating all the same arguments we've seen since homophobes needed things to complain about, and protecting the children is a better excuse than I hate this. So, I'll be taking a look at this idea and just giving my non-horrific take. Speaking of horrific, imagine living without clean drinking water. It is a tragedy, it is a honest to god human failure. But thankfully, Omaze has partnered with Give Power and 501c3 to help build a cleaner, more sustainable, and more hopeful future. And for this event, to help raise money, we're giving away a Tesla. Yes, a Tesla. But not just any Tesla, their top of line flagship SUV model. Forget being put on a six month long wait list. Instead with Omaze, go to omaze.com slash sarcasticchorus for a chance to win a Tesla Model X Plaid. With the new Tesla Model X, versatility has never been more stylish or powerful. With all new interior and exterior model styling, go wherever you want and be the first to get there with their 10,020 horsepower engines just waiting at your fingertips. Taking you a quarter mile in 9.9 .9 seconds and 313 mile range. Want to watch a movie after a long day of travel? And you can in style with their 17 inch cinematic display and panoramic roof, allowing you to chill out and enjoy your favorite shows in comfort. For your chance to win a Tesla Model X Plaid and support a great cause like Give Power and 501c3, go to www.omaze.com slash sarcastic chorus. This is a win-win situation. Go check out Omaze and do your part in helping the world. Back to the video. So shipping can be weird. What should be a dumb fun pastime for fandoms often turns into a bloody flame war for no fucking reason. Some people just take it too far, and others it's just not enough to like the same thing, you have to actively hate all the others. There's an actual human psychology reason for this, we as a species are social animals, naturally forming in groups that we identify as, the groups we perceive as threats, and those we just view as others. It's been shown that even babies will display this behavior. We just like it when good things happen to our team, and love it when bad things happen to everyone else. It's who we are as a species, and we are working on it. What makes this a bit of a nightmare is how what gets judged to be the in-group is then labeled normal, so all other behaviors is then described as either being weird at best, and other things at worst. This other camp is where LGBT people have been trapped in for roughly 2021 years, give or take, when Christianity took over, replacing the Roman attitude of so long as you're not a bottom, it's cool, which replaced the Greek attitude of mandatory teacher-student relationships. This is all a massive oversimplification, of course, but the idea is that 
for the mainstream culture in Western society, it wasn't until basically now that we've seen wider acceptance of LGBTQ people. As previously, it was seen as a mistake or a mental disorder that needed to be corrected. Instead, we kind of know better now that it is in fact normal, as despite what the angry people in Florida want you to believe, these people exist, they will continue to exist, regardless of the media they consume, and it's cruel to ask them to be anything other than themselves because you don't personally understand it. But in spite of this general increase of live and let live, the pushback against any attempt to increase the visibility of LGBT media or shows that just depict it has gotten a lot of backlash as they are quote, forcing the topic of sex onto children. Now this is dumb for a number of reasons. For starters, sexuality doesn't equal sex. Yes, some men like having sex with other men. It's a thing. But just because a cartoon movie depicts two boys who might be gay doesn't automatically mean we'll see them have sex or it'll even be about that. I mean, take a look at every other Disney princess film. They never go farther than kissing. Because these films are designed to be for kids and adults. So they have to limit it like that to not piss off the parents. So as far as they'll go, is kissing. You know, that common display of physical affection that you see everywhere. And in spite of Prince Eric pounding that tuna, just the idea of two guppies potentially holding hands was enough to spark outrage in the more conservative communities, because they hold LGBT couples to a widely different standard than the hetero norm. As to them, the idea that some boys like other boys and that some girls like other girls and everything else in the spectrum is an inherently sexual topic. When really, when discussing it, it could be as banal as just holding hands. When really, just hypothetically, when putting it in shows, it can be as banal as kissing or, I don't know, who you hold hands with. To the homophobe groups, they immediately jump to sex, because that's the part they have always hyper-focused on, as the actual people involved are ignored. Luca is a great example of this hyperfixation as people lost their minds over a possible gay love story between a 13 and a 14 year old Luca and Bruno. And just to bring this up, 13, 14, everyone says they're too young. Take a look at Avatar between a 12 year old and a 14 year old and oh, no one complains because different standard. But in spite of Luca having the very obvious metaphor for the queer experience, locked behind the fish people allegory that could be applied to anything, because why say it when you can make money in China? Luca still drew visceral reactions from people who just really don't like gay people in their shows. Despite being perfectly okay with LGBT groups being forced to subsist on straight media and subtext, the main argument against Luca and Bruno are that they're too young for any kind of relationship. Because they're too young to think about se oh my god. I think I want to make this clear. The only ones talking about sex here are the groups that don't want this representation in the first place, in the subsection of not safe for work that I shouldn't even have to say that I denounce. But besides them, there's just this general unawareness that people come into their sexuality at different ages. Some people, it takes a while to figure themselves out. Others basically realize it from minute one. Gay kids being gay doesn't dip into the topic of sex, unless you want it to. If you want, you can dumb it down to who they like to hold hands with. But no, the conversation always has to get dragged to these extremes because that's the only way they can make themselves sound sane. To make it sound like it's propaganda that's altering the youth and not at all providing new information and providing alternatives that kids didn't know that they could take and possibly allowing them to better understand their own feelings. But no, no, we need to make this about sex. You even have this idea thrown about that parents want to discuss LGBT people with their kids. A real T's and the B's type conversation. So absolutely no one else can even touch it. But yeah, okay, sure. Here's the thing. What about the kids that have already realized their queerness? Are they supposed to shut up and pretend to get along with all the other kids? Sit through the constant references to mommies and daddies, every straight couple that has ever been in a cartoon, ever. Like how they can just have young kids be couples in Amphibia and just no one will complain about it? No? That's like ridiculous? as parents can't expect to be the only reciprocal of information that kids will learn from. That isn't the case now, and it has never been the case ever. Just like people complain about racism being discussed in schools, racism happens. Kids experience it. And some people having the luxury to ignore it because it doesn't affect 
their children only leaves them ignorant of what other people are going through and prevents them from understanding and developing empathy for them. You're effectively teaching them to ignore the existence of others because it's not your problem. So what they want is for their kids to grow up to be assholes. And another argument you hear a lot is that it's just too much. That LGBT media is f it's fine. I'm cool with it personally. We just wish it stopped getting rubbed in our faces all the time. You know, nice, reasonable sounding requests. Am I right? No, no it isn't. See, this idea has always been so funny to me. Like, it's actually hilarious. As you have a remote in your hand, you literally get to choose what media you shove your face into. But it's a possible inclusion of something you potentially may watch, but that cause you to not watch it. Plus throw in the fact that how little queer representation there are on TV. Yeah, that does kind of sound a little bit homophobic. But let's give them the benefit of the doubt and say that yes, they did want to watch something, only for it to slap one whole gay character in the show and hyper-focus on them. I don't know if you've heard this before, but not every piece of media has to be for you. Shocking, I know, but let's just use a less controversial topic to use as an example. Star Wars. Now, no one hates Star Wars more than Star Wars fans. And part of the problem is that Star Wars is different for everyone. Some people love magic space samurai stories. Other people like space cowboys. The fandom's just growing more and more territorial over which direction the franchise should take, making every new show they introduce a referendum on what is Star Wars? Is it terrible now or is it amazing? Everyone is so focused on what do I like instead of wondering, is this for me? Some shows aren't made for older audiences. Some shows aren't about the Jedi. But what so many people get in their heads is that this show isn't for me, therefore it must be bad. Like personally, I don't care for Rebels. Does that mean it's shit? Depends. But personally, I know I am not the right age demographic, so I just move on. Because just because I don't really like Rebels, doesn't mean that shows for me aren't being made. Which is the exact same thing people who complain about too much gay in their shows need to hear. Sometimes a show just isn't for you. Other times it's for everyone, but the elements of LGBT representation causes people to turn away. That is not the show's fault. It's your preference. I'm allegedly straight, but gay media doesn't bother me. It's the same cliches, different couples. But I still can appreciate the landmark representation and the differing worldview that the creators bring. I love learning about different perspectives and worldviews as I believe those can enrich my own. I just find this idea that people trying to shut out all LGBT shows, all these characters, just because, no, they're talking teaching sex to her. I'm like, no, fuck no. Get a hold of yourself. That is a blatant lie and you guys just need to admit it. These people exist. And for people to complain about acknowledging or even criticizing the amount of LGBT representation that we get, I just want to bring it back to those babies. Developing in and out group mentalities. Because that's the reason we need more representation in our children's shows. We need shows to be gayer, to be more diverse, so that when these kids grow up, they treat non-hetero couples and people as just a different thing, rather than just focus on it being different. This whole fucking idea has just been so annoying to me. Like it was really bad in Luca. This main Miriam thing is just as dumb. And every time it gets brought up, I'm like, no, who the fuck is talking about sex? Why do people need to take it to such extremes? And you realize, no, they just try and do that so they sound sane. The thing is, these people exist and they will continue to exist no matter the show that's on TV, no matter the law that gets passed. They exist, they are here, and you can't stop them. And remember to check out Omaze. 